I Am A Beautiful Home is still to this day one of my favorite pieces. It was done in colored pencil on Stonehenge paper and was created back in 2009. I was inspired by a dear friend who was pregnant at the time and who had doubts of what kind of mother she might be. But there are also some scary moments in her pregnancy too that sort of compounded all of the stress. So I created this image as a homage to her with the message in its title, I am a beautiful home. The blackbirds represent a solid foundation and I also read that they represent good luck for the future. The nest of eggs represents how gentle this friend of mine's nature is and how nurturing her kind spirit is that even a wild bird would choose to place its nest of precious babies on her. The doves represent peace and calmness that I wished for her and that I knew the baby would eventually bring. I put this older piece in my Birds of a Feather show because it fit right along with my message. A beautiful woman in one of the most sensitive states of her being, more at ease and happier because of her kinship with nature and her winged friends. The Beautiful Bird series was started in 2009 and came about because I wanted to pay homage to nature and its winged inhabitants, which caused me so much, so, they just caused me so many peaceful pauses in life and they grant me so much inspiration. They are colored pencil and acrylic creations in the mixed media style I described earlier. And though some of the birds are indeed inspired by real life birds, they are for the most part quite imaginary and whimsical. Once again, meant to delight the viewer and draw an, draw an eye back towards nature and the real life beauties that surround us. I was so pleased with how the group looked together and as, a, as large as the grouping in the show was, I think there were 18 or 16 pieces. There are still yet that people haven't seen, that I haven't shown anyone yet. This is going to be an ongoing series that I'll just keep adding to. I also really look forward to getting these feathered lovelies of mine on different handmade products like necklaces, brooches, bags, cards. I also think that they would make great little characters for a children's book. These goddesses are to date my newest pieces and I had so much fun with them. I sort of stand in front of them and I think, wow, I made those. I'm very proud of them. I think I broke through creative hurdle with these guys and actually found myself enjoying the paint and paintbrushes more instead of fighting against them like I usually do. I know I can work some magic if you give me colored pencils, but my skills with paint and my confidence in my painting skills are, let's just say, lacking. <laughs> I'm so anxious to do more though. And I have 10 in the series that I've designed so far. Only Zuninga, Freya, and Talita are done at the moment, but I'll be surprised if I don't get the other seven done by the end of this summer. And perhaps that might be another exhibition. Sometimes I look at some of my work and I think, how on earth did I come up with these? Like with these lovely ladies, they just sprang forth from my pencil with such ease over the course of a weekend. I do hope that once I'm done with the 10 I already have designed that I can go back and add others to the series, but we'll see. It's one of those awesome creative moments where you just have to trust blindly in your talents and believe it'll be there when you need it to be. Let's hope. This series was created specifically for my show Birds of a Feather. They are strong and stoic female characters that are melded and blended somewhat seamlessly with their feathered counterparts. Or that's what I was going for anyways. <laughs> They're supposed to be one in the same. They're supposed to share the same mind, body, and soul. They are forever resplendent, calm, and powerful in their kindred kinship. I just love them. Aren't these so much fun? I find this little duo just so quirky and sweet. The companion piece to Tilda and Thornton is called Emmeline and Everly, and there will be a third called Hannah and Hartford. I sewed up some muslin, muslin in a tapestry style, gessoed it, sanded it, used acrylic painting to create the, the, 
like most of the image then I sanded that quite a bit this was the first time I had done it so it was really fun just to follow my instincts and not worry that perhaps I was ruining the painting by sanding the crap out of it um, when I sanded it a second time then I sprayed it and I added a smidge of colored pencil just to tighten everything up and add a bit of detail this pair is supposed to be similar in story as the Goddess series, where they portray symbiotic friendship and relationship. In Tilda and Thornton's case, specifically, they are perhaps a bit more visually removed and separate from their counterparts than the Goddesses are, but I just loved the idea in the image of this prim and proper, fancifully dressed lady being completely willing and completely happy to let this giant bird perch on top of her expensive hat. She's looking a bit serious and stern, perhaps, but that is because she's worried and concerned for her dearest friend, Thornton the bird, and if his only safe place is perched atop her most expensive hat, so be it, then that is where her dear heart shall sit. And of course, they have the most delightful conversations together over peach tea and praline tarts. Hetty and Humphrey is a newer piece that is still in my style, I think, but it's also differing from my usual work, which at this point I really, I really, really like. I like the slight change. I'm really drawn to mixed media lately and the depth of texture and just all the fun stuff that goes on with it. And I really had a lot of fun creating some mixed media backgrounds using paints paper, stamps, stencils, collage, and then I was looking at these backgrounds just feeling so excited about them, which is odd for me because uh, they're abstract of course and I'm not usually a huge fan of abstract, but I looked at them and I started to wonder how one of my whimsy-filled girls would sit on top of all of this wonderful texture, and I think the end result is quite lovely and I think she sits there quite nicely. You can see how this pair fits in with the theme of my show and follows the same story as Tilda and Thornton where they depict a mutual respect and display a beautiful and kind friendship. These two have their own little story of course. May I tell it to you? You see, Hattie is a newspaper reporter and columnist by day and Humphrey works alongside her as her fact checker but by night by night, they love to sit over pots of peppermint and honey tea whilst they have great grand debates over politics. Also whilst conversing, they are forever busy knitting sweaters for orphaned orangutans, a cause near and dear to both of their hearts. Hattie is a swift and nimble knitter while Humphrey is a quick and quirky woolen winder. What a splendid team these two make, don't you think? The Owlet series was not intended for an exhibition. I started them, oh, I'd say a year and a half ago, but they just seemed to fit in well with my theme. I got a wonderful scroll saw for one of my last Christmas gifts, so I've been having a ball cutting out my own shapes and such. And so I designed a little owl shape in two different sizes, and I just had a complete ball just drawing out their designs. The drawings came so fluidly and it, I just loved how the personality of each just seemed to come up on its own. Their names as well. It's like they named themselves. I knew I wanted all of the names to start with O to go with the Owlet series, but their names are so quirky and fun. Let's see, there's nine created so far and they are named Owan, Odalis, Obasi, and Odo. There's Oberon, the serious one, Ophira, the sweet, pretty woman one, <laughs> there's Odette, there's Oakley, and there's Obert. They're all done in colored pencil on gessoed pine with a little wee bit of acrylic paint. I love, love, love working on raw pine. I just find colored pencils feel so buttery when working on wood like that. These guys honestly don't have a huge concept or story behind them at all. They're just beautiful little creations and 
they're just they are just beautiful little creations that I hope will make a person think about the beauties that live in real life. I always feel a little awkward when I draw animals that are a rabbit's natural predator, but since these owl beauties are in my imaginary world, I can also say that they are of the vegetarian variety. So you see the bunnies in my studio, forgive me. <laughs> well, that's about all. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any other questions or inquiries or if you just want to talk about artwork. And thanks so, so much for visiting and for listening. And I hope you enjoyed what Jonathan and I did here to archive my 2011 solo exhibition, Birds of a Feather. Thanks so much.